hello and what's up guys. This week, there's a lot of new updates for you SketchUp and VRA lovers. For SketchUp, we got a new SketchUp 2017 and VRA 3.4 beta for SketchUp. You can get this VRA 3.4 beta for free by fill the registration online in Chaos Group webpage. But, the license key only activated until next year at January 1st. Although, I still use SketchUp 2016. In this episode, I will show you what's new in VRA 3.4 beta for SketchUp. Let's get started. The first thing that you maybe notice is the new interface on VRA toolbars includes three toolbars with easy shortcuts to some of the most commonly used VRA components. Let's go to the new VRA asset editor. It comes with the new black theme interface, and if you click on the small arrow at the left, it'll show the category and library material tab. The VRA asset editor allows for convenient management of VRA related assets and VRA render settings. At first, it's maybe a little confusing. But trust me, if you get used to it, you'll find it's very easy to use than the previous version. If you go to Quick Setting, that maybe remembered you how the material slider work in Lumen. Drag the parameter setting, and it'll be automatically changed in material view. For lights and geometry tab, well skip it for now and come back later. Because it's connected with the other ray toolbars. So, let's jump into the gear tab icon at the right. It all has the same setting in the previous ray option. With some modification and changes. For more information and detail explanation about this, I will provide the link in this video description below. You will find the complete guide about all this setting in Vray Asset Editor. If you see the render icon in Vray Rendering and Options toolbar, you can change the behavior of this icon when you click on it. Go back to Vray Asset Editors and click on this box. You can render it for production render mode or for RV render mode. Batch render is the same as the previous version. With Batch Render you can set up all of your scene tabs and render each individual scene tab with the press of one button. The Vray 61 Stereoscopic Render button automatically generates a 61 aspect ratio cube map for both eyes. Designed to be used with most readily available VR headsets. Then, Vray Frame Buffer. Vray Frame Buffer commonly used to view all render elements in a single window and switch between them easily. It's also used to view the render channels individually, and many more. Freeze RT View. It used to freeze the RT render. And set camera focus to set the focus of the camera. Let's go to the Ray Lights toolbar. The first is Rectangular Light. Rectangular Light is a Ray specific light source plugin that can be used to create physically accurate aerial lights. And, when you create a light from Bray Light Toolbar, it will be automatically appear in the Lights tab in Bray Asset Editor. I found that, this new update make us very easy to control the lights ever than before. And the interesting thing is, you can change the shape from rectangular light into ellipse shape. For the other lights options, still the same as the previous version. There were two things that got my attention from this toolbar. Create Mesh Light and Light Intensity. Let's try the create mesh light first. You need to make an object, any kind of object is fine, as long as you make it into a group. Then, click on the group of the object, and click create mesh light. It'll turn the object into a light source itself. You can change the intensity, setting, and any other option from the regular lights. Then, light intensity. It can help you to change the intensity of the lights. You just need to click the light intensity. Then, drag up and down to any lights. You will see the intensity from the lights change in Bray Asset Editor. Next, Bray Fur. First, you need to create an object and make it into a group. Then, click on Bray Fur. It will also appear for the selected mesh in the Bray Asset Editor. You can set the basic parameter like length, thickness, gravity, bend, taper, and scale. Let's try to render it to see the result.
spray fur is a very simple procedural fur plugin. The fur is generated only during render time and is not actually present in the scene. The last is mesh clipper. Same as before, the mesh clipper can only be applied to a group or component objects in SketchUp. After creating a mesh clipper object, a bounding box with a mesh clipper icon will appear in the viewport around the selected group or component. The bounding box and icon represent the newly applied clipper object properties. And this is what it looks like. Let's render it to see the result. Okay, that's all for this review about the new Vray SketchUp Beta 3.4. Next episode, I will show you how I re-render my own work in Vray 3.4 Beta. Don't forget to subscribe and give thumbs up if you like this video. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. Goodbye.